podcast. Welcome to Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. I'm your host, Spencer Newharth, and today we're joined by Ryan Callahan, Mark Kenyon, Chester Floyd, Seth Morris, Tony Peterson, Ford Van Fossen, and Logan Williamson. Logan, this is your first time on Trivia. Tell folks what you do at First Light. I am the waterfowl category manager here at What does that mean? That means that uh, I manage our uh, apparel and gear lines, um, our camo lines for for waterfowl gear, waterfowl Mm -hmm. category. We just learned about a whole bunch of cool waterfowl stuff. What gets you most excited, Cal, about what Logan showed us this week? Well, obviously, you've been like slow playing the waiter thing, and the waiters are awesome and a big foundational piece. Uh, I mean, all the additions this year are sweet. People are going to love them. They're great. But the thing that continues to impress me is like our uh, refuge parka I used for an entire year as a bed in the dog blind or in the in the blind for snort. So just getting covered in, in mud and dog and dog claws and, okay. you know, launching off after birds. Super mm-hmm. excited. Used it for a year. Did you ever wear it no, in that Never year? wore it. And then really? last year. And this is the endorsement you're choosing to have? Is that your dog <laughs> laid yeah. on it? Okay. Yeah, this Use is, re- this is okay. real stuff. Okay. Versatile. Keep going. I'm, I'm in. Last year, I actually wore that same jacket, mm. even though it did not look great and was still completely waterproof, windproof. Uh, just a burly, freaking awesome jacket, and you can still swing a shotgun in it. So, yeah. An endorsement from Cal and Snort. Snort. Okay. Yep. It's good. Mark and Tony, this is your first time in the new studio. What do you think of our new setup? How did Phil do? It's a little dark. Is it? But other than that, <laughs> just kidding, Phil. I, I think Phil it's a funny did a joke. wonderful. Thanks, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> it's really no, it's fun. Great. Yeah. It's great. I love you it. You think it's going to change your trivia game? I, I think it's going to help me win. No, yeah. I can what. feel the vibe in here. Mm-hmm. What's going to change the, the vibe is that there's some parody, right? Brody and oh. Steve aren't here right now, mm-hmm. so I feel like it is an open. It's an open contest today. Yeah, sure. it's just way more relaxed. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, did you cater to anyone in this room today, Spencer? Be no. honest. Mm-mm. No. You have to identify the shills to I, stick I, with our earlier poker theme. I did not. If if you're on the meat eater, first light, FHF, Dave Smith decoys, Phelps, if you're on their payroll. You don't get a bone thrown to you. Nice. All the folks in here are. Corey's also trying to mess with the vibe with the with the upside down sunglasses. Uh, he's got like a, a World Series of Poker <laughs> thing going on over here, right? Yeah, that's right. I noticed you didn't mention my name either, so it must be oh, really throwing okay. off and everybody. It, that's see, you're right. It's that's how working. much it threw me off. It's and we're joined by Corey Calkins. Thank you. Now this is a ten round quiz show with questions from Meat Eater's four verticals, which are hunting, fishing, conservation, and cooking. And there is a prize. Meat Eater will donate five hundred dollars to the conservation organization of the winners choosing. And for the stat of the week this week, we're comparing the performance of Mark Kenyon and Tony Peterson. <laughs> That's fun. Ooh. Now these two fellas are our nerdiest white tail nerds, which is yeah, what makes them such true. good hosts of Wired to Hunt. But does that make them good at trivia? Does the room have any predictions on uh, how these two stand in our four categories? Mark, Tony, what do you guys think? Hey, Spencer, can you give us a hint if there are any questions about pollinators? No, no, okay. no pollinator questions. Then Mark today. doesn't have an advantage. You no, know, no, I'm saying for your your historical performance, which one of you two does better? You think? I bet you we're really close. Okay, I think we're really close. Mm-hmm. And I think we're I, everything I've been involved in. We're like one tier below the winners usually. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Give or take in that we're, ballpark. We're like the wired to hunt bridesmaids. Sure. We're never, <laughs> we're always like second or third place. Yeah. Now, now Mark said that you guys are really close. Uh, he was talking about performance, but also just like you have a good relationship. True. Again, this week, uh, while they're in Bozeman, they're sharing a hotel room. <laughs> Mark told me something that I think might've been off the record, but we're going to talk about on the podcast. Oh, the wow. first night you guys were here, you stayed up till one o'clock just chatting. Yeah. We're people don't know this, but we are actually best friends. Okay. Like super, Good. maybe even super best friends. Mm-hmm. <laughs> super best. And no, they're no. both side sleepers. So that helps. <laughs> <laughs> Only one bed necessary. Uh-huh. And, uh, and, but we go north south. Oh, yeah. yeah. So it's not weird. No, 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 no. <laughs> what did you guys talk about until 1 a.m. in your hotel room? <laughs> Can we be real about this? this is well, I, I don't know. Tony shared with me embarrassing stories about his family history. Oh, that's true. Okay. Some very strange conspiracy <laughs> theory beliefs. Mm. Uh, Not mine necessarily. Okay. And uh, some dark stories from Tony's past, as well as 
a deep conversation around why have we not been back to the moon in so many oh. decades. Oh, and that sounds like another conspiracy theory. Did you guys have some drinks or what I, were we you smoking? We know we were both completely sober. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, true. Spencer said we're the nerdiest of the whitetail hunters. Mm-hmm. But I, to, to be clear, you didn't talk about whitetails at all. I don't think we did. <laughs> no. <laughs> Got it. Understood. No whitetails. Nope. Maybe if you guys don't win, you could like uh, change the podcast name like Wired for a second or something like yeah, that. Yeah, there's going to be some new spinoff here for sure. And here is comparing your performance in the category of hunting. Mark gets 40% of questions right, while Tony gets 71%. Oh, wow. Really? Good job, Tony. In the category of fishing, Mark gets 40% of questions right, while Tony gets 80%. Oh, boy. In the category of conservation, Mark gets 59% of questions right, while Tony gets 67%. <laughs> and in the category of cooking, Mark gets 25% of questions right, while Tony gets 33%. A clean sweep across the board. Well On done, average, Tony. Mark gets 4.6 points per game, while Tony gets 6.3 I think your points tally's per off. game. You think so? Yeah, I feel like I've never gotten less than five that I can remember. I, th- I will double check these stats for you, Mark. We'll come can back Can we get sometime. a third part, party audit? <laughs> I think that's what I Mark's feel like that was for. a yeah. very yeah. accurate yeah. assessment of yeah. the yeah. performance. Yeah, you would say that. <laughs> no. Yeah. But no, I feel like the pressure's on now. I need to uh, beat Tony the time it counts. Now, here's our 0%er question of the week, which tests how much knowledge players have retained from previous games. This question was from episode 376. The topic was gear, and nobody got it right. Here's the question. If you know the answer, you just shout it out. Besides a blade, name two of the three tools that the first Swiss Army knife had. Corkscrew, tweezers. Uh, So a, let's see, the... You said tweezers, corkscrew. What else was said? Saw. A saw. A file. Scissors. The incorrect answers given in the game we played were scissors, saws, and tweezers. The correct answer was a screwdriver, a can or bottle opener, can and opener. a reamer. Uh, uh, the old reamer. First Swiss Army knife. Yeah. We have some housekeeping to get to. On a previous show, we talked about woodchucks, which inspired a bunch of comedians to write in with the trivia question, how much wood would a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? He'd chuck all the wood that a woodchuck could if wood could woodchuck could chuck wood. I have a better answer, Cal. As it <laughs> turns out, this riddle actually has a solve. In the 1980s, a biologist from New York observed groundhogs and determined that they could dig an entire burrow in one day. These burrows were about 35 feet long, which meant they moved 700 pounds of dirt. Now, to convert that to wood, we can look at the weight of a green piece of cottonwood, which weighs 59 pounds per square foot. So, to answer the question, a woodchuck could chuck 12 square feet of wood per day if a woodchuck could chuck wood. (laughs) <laughs> well, that doesn't rhyme, does I love it? it. 12 square feet of green cottonwood per day. Cal, does that reinforce what you think you know about woodchucks? Does that seem right that they could chuck 12 square feet of wood a day? No, I just look at them as like little bears that eat a variety of things that in my mind would make them very tasty. Although I've never, never killed one. <laughs> you know, I don't think I've, I've killed one on a friend's deck because it was, you know, when they pee on stuff, it stains wood. Oh. Yeah. But you didn't eat it. I didn't. No, we were in we were in fishing mode, and that was just kind of like part of the the business that had to be taken care of before we got to go fish. Don't show up to uh, Cal's buddy's deck to pee on, or you're going to get shot. That's it's more right. of a story. Now the Shelby Index for today's game is a three, so our winner should get six correct answers. And with that, we're on to the game of trivia. Play the drop, Phil. Oh, it is nice. <laughs> <laughs> now the glasses are really screwing <laughs> Welcome to the Thunderdome. Game on, suckers! That was fun, Phil. You that have was, outdone ooh. yourself, I Phil. I felt wow. like we were yeah. on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire there because I didn't realize until you just did it, but the lights do a lot of stuff during that music, right, Phil? Yeah, yeah, I just, uh, it's a lot of button presses. I did them in the right order. We'll see if I can keep that up for the next uh, however many years this show runs. <laughs> well done, Phil. I just feel like I, like I figure out how to turn these off. Just, just keep going. I'll figure it out. Question one. The topic is conservation, and this will be multiple choice. This first great question comes to us via Dusty Mara. If you have a question you think is right for Meat Eater Trivia, you can send it to trivia at themeateater.com. Which of these things takes the longest to decompose? Is it a glass jar, a leather shoe, 
aluminum can, or plastic bottle. Again, the topic is conservation. Which of these things takes the longest to decompose? Glass jar, leather shoe, aluminum can, plastic bottle. Spencer, I got to tell you, guy came in to, uh, young, young guy, came in to the tent sale that we had over the weekend. Okay. And he was looking, looking for you. Had a bone to pick. Okay. He's like, yeah, I keep sending in trivia and none of them have been picked. So mm-hmm. they haven't been read. I said, oh, okay, well, yeah, sometimes, you know, you can't get through all your emails and mm-hmm. stuff. And, and I was like, how do you know he's not reading them? He goes, uh, cause they haven't been on the show. It's good. I like his confidence. <laughs> yeah. We will have a future stat coming up about uh, what your odds are of getting a question read on the show because we have a lot of people with that same feedback wondering why their question never made it to air. Uh, so we'll learn what your chances are. Does everybody have an answer for which of these things takes the longest to decompose? Glass jar, leather shoe, aluminum can, plastic bottle. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Corey saying plastic bottle. Tony saying glass jar. Chester saying plastic bottle. Seth saying glass jar. Cal saying plastic bottle. Mark saying plastic bottle. Logan saying plastic bottle. Ford saying plastic bottle. Nobody went with leather shoe or aluminum can. The correct answer is glass jar. A few folks got it right. It takes 50 years for a leather shoe to decompose. 250 years for an aluminum can, 500 years for a plastic bottle, and 1 million years for a glass jar. This is because there are no microorganisms in nature that can break down glass. It's estimated that only 28% of glass in America gets recycled, meaning millions of tons enter landfills every year. You want to know why uh, you're wrong here? Go ahead. Uh, Because plastic just gets smaller. doesn't decompose, bro. Yeah, you, you, you can take it up uh, with uh, the folks that gave this stat one million years. Listen, I'm not going to sit here jar. and just beat you over the head with this. Okay. You're wrong. Uh-huh. We all know it. <laughs> and we can move on. Thank you, Cal. <laughs> Question two. The topic is cooking. Although it's named after an Asian city, this crispy dumpling was invented in San Francisco in the 1950s. A stumped room. Although it's named after an Asian city, this crispy dumpling was invented in San Francisco in the 1950s. Corey with the quickest answer. I think, Corey, do you have this one right? Check. Okay. We'll see how these uh, sunglasses fare for you. Is it going to be performance-based on if you wear them again? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. How's the rest of the room feel? Seth, you were quick to answer. Do you think you have this one right? Uh, No, just first thing that popped in my head. Cal? How about you? I'm just dying to know the composition of this glass jar and why we need it to disintegrate or, you know, because I mean, if it's, if it's really glass, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter. Point is don't leave glass in the woods. Agree? Glass can turn into basically like a sand and be totally negated. Uh Mm -hmm. Whereas plastics, they're going to eventually make it back into you. Yeah, that's where my mind went as a kid, picking up sea glass on the shore. It's all smooth and beautiful, but I guess it hasn't decomposed, technically speaking. But it will get there. Whereas a plastic just, she's 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 always there. You got it wrong. No. Does everybody have an answer? You need to pick a question that has a finite answer. Does everybody have an answer? Although it's named after an Asian city, this crispy dumpling was invented in San Francisco in the 1950s. Just, Logan, how we doing? Just pick an Asian city, Logan. Go ahead and <laughs> reveal your answers. We have Corey saying Rangoon. Tony saying, what does that say, Tony? Manila. <laughs> Manila. Chester <laughs> saying wonton. That's not a good sign for your answer. Uh, Seth saying wonton. Cal saying wonton. Mark saying Hong Kong dumpling. Logan saying wonton. <laughs> Ford saying wonton. We have a correct answer in the room. It's Rangoon. Corey. Yeah. Got it right. Yeah. Damn. That's good. The first known Rangoon, Rangoon was served at a Polynesian <laughs> restaurant called Trader Vic's in California. Early also versions. Also a tiki bar. You've been there? Uh, well, I haven't been there, but it's one of the, <laughs> one of the w- most famous tiki bars in the really? world. Really? Oh, yeah. 
So that's kind of devastating. That you Isn't that reference yeah, in terrible. Tr- uh, Werewolves of London by Warren Zevon? Yep. Drinking a Peter yeah. Colada at Trader, Trader Vicks. Okay. His hair was perfect. Wow. Yep. That's why we have Deep you here, Phil, is for uh, tiki bar knowledge. Yeah. Good on you. Halt the show and piss everybody off. <laughs> Early versions of the dumpling were filled with crab or cream cheese, just like today. If you want to learn how to make them with smoked trout, then go to TheMeatEater.com and check out Jenny Wheatley's article for Smoked Fish Rangoon. Question three. The topic is hunting. This next great question comes to us via Dusty Mara. If you have a question you think is right for Meat Eater Trivia, you can send it to trivia at TheMeatEater.com. Didn't he already get a question? I think Sweet. he had. So here's the thing, Mark. Either I made a mistake or I used two of his questions. Oh, uh, I will man. solve that after this episode. <laughs> Question three. What was the nickname of the AK-57 Uzi radar laser triple barrel double scoped heat seeking shotgun into 30 point buck? Oh my gosh. I got to run through the song quick. Oh, so this is going to take a little bit. Um, oh man. A favorite song of mine. Here's the yeah. question again. What was the nickname of the AK-57 Uzi radar laser triple barrel double scoped heat seeking shotgun into Turdy Point Buck? I thought you weren't playing to people in the room. I don't. I don't know that it is. Uh, it's not a Montana thing, my friend. <laughs> yeah, that's hurting. <laughs> Where are you from, Logan? Michigan. Okay. That helps you. <laughs> Four, yeah. Forty are from Maryland, right? Quit making so much noise. You're waking me up. I'm That's asleep. in that song. Do you mind keep? Yeah, just keep singing it. I, I mean, don't. How many I, times have you heard that song? Yeah. I've heard it so many times. This, yeah. this is a softball, and I can't think of it right now. I'm panicking. I've heard it uh, zero times. What? What? Zero times. That's a lie. I mean, to be fair here, we are talking about a profoundly Midwestern song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But this is we, a deer camp culture thing. We try to represent all yeah. parts of the country in trivia. This one happens to favor folks. Us Westerners, you know, we're uh, independent folk. Mm-hmm. Spencer, we like to yep. strike out on our own, form our own traditions. That's right. That are solo pursuits. Mm-hmm. Tackle nature head on. Don't listen to music. Live, live by our own means. Here's the question again. What was the nickname of the AK-57 Uzi radar laser triple barrel double scoped heat seeking shotgun into 30 point buck? Chester, how are we doing over there? You've been thinking long and hard. I've seen you wording the lyrics. Do you think you've come up with the right answer? No. Marcus, how about you? Hold on. Tr- you're screwing me up, Spencer. <laughs> okay, don't I was <laughs> almost there. Don't even, the don't even look at <laughs> him. I was almost there. <laughs> don't even look at him. You need to give him some time. Otherwise, this may be a 0 percenter yeah. question of the week. How about you, Tony? Are you going to get this no one clue. right? No clue. No clue. I don't think Cal's even going to write down an answer. I wrote down an answer. Okay. Is it going to be a good one? Yeah, it's a great one. Okay. It's a classic firearm name. <laughs> Is that the kind of how the song goes? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> da, 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 da. Oh, Marcus, how so we doing? Painful. <laughs> no, like I can sing the beginning, and then I start mm-hmm. singing like the AK-57 yep. Uzi Raider double barrel heat seeking shotgun. Mm-hmm. We're running out of time. Does it help with Cal coming in your John ear? John Wayne, G.I. Mm-hmm. Joe. My, my so name frozen. is Flo. My fingers were so frozen I couldn't pull the trigger. I was Don't just... you know? <laughs> we need more. Like just before this. Um, Run out of time, Mark. I know. This is it's about to be not That's interesting. So <laughs> <laughs> I had, about. I had we're almost in. there. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to be able to get it. Is everybody ready? Yep. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Corey saying Susie. Tony saying Susie. Are you two copying oh, no off way. each other? That's the first name that popped into my head. <laughs> yeah, me too. Chester saying <laughs> Betsy. Seth saying... What's Howitzer. That? Cal saying Betsy. Mark saying Old Bessie. Logan saying Uper Smoke Pole. <laughs> Ford <laughs> saying Bess. The correct answer, which nobody got, is Betty Lou. Hmm. Close, Cal. That song was released by the Bananas at Large in 1989. Here's how they describe the deer and their gun. Take it away, Phil. Well, he was eight foot tall, weighed 12,000 pounds. With every step, there was a shake sh- 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 shaking on the ground. 
I think I've only heard the remix of this. That's the issue. Yeah. It was created by God just for outdoor magazines. Now I'm not much for thinking. No, I don't do it often, but I had an idea. Yeah, what was that? To put that dirty pointer right, right in, in his coffin. coffin. Yeah. <laughs> get him next time. Uh, 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 dirty point buck. I couldn't get to my grenade. Yeah, yeah. right. The howitzer was in the shop. My stomach was tied into a monkey knot. <laughs> yeah, my only hope was Betty Lou. She <laughs> was the one. A, a combination, combination AK-57, 57, Uzi Raider, laser, triple barrel, barrel double scope, teeth seeking shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Betty Lou. Phil, I had it so you'd cut it off before the burb. We'll push we'll, right through. So, and we but got, then I we couldn't do it. Would, Howitzer, fade out. would Howitzer have counted too? <laughs> no, he couldn't get to the Howitzer, he said. Oh. That's, why he, went, in a that's monkey why he went for Betty Lou. Oh. Every opening day in Michigan, that mm-hmm. song is playing on all the radios. So every morning at Deer Camp, it'd be like 4.30 in the morning. My uncle would turn on the radio. The wood burning stoves popping and crackling, and as soon as that would turn on the radio, I'd be laying on the couch still sleeping, and Grandpa and Uncle would like crank it up, and that would get me out of bed before we go hunting. So yeah, I still listen to it leading into hunting season when I'm getting excited, and I'm so mad at myself. You'll for never forget that. it again. Yeah, it's the hype. Song. It's kind of like like betraying <laughs> an old friend. Yeah, right it there, really yeah. is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Question four: The topic <sighs> is gear. The gear company that Yvonne Chouinard founded is named after a region on this continent. Here's the question again. The gear company that Yvonne Chouinard founded is named after a region on this continent. A very confident room. Tony, you got this one right? Seth, you got this one right? No cheating now, Tony. We just had a zero percenter. We may have a 100 percenter here. Chester and Tony doing some more writing. You guys second guessing? I was hoping you were going to make it a little harder, like name a peak in this region or something. Mm, we'll see. It almost feels like it should be a trap here. I know. It's not. You really got to listen to Is that. Is everybody one. ready? Tony? Are you writing out all of your continents? No. I was just, I'm good. <laughs> it's got a globe, of, map of the globe. Right? Go ahead. And reveal your answers. We have Corey saying South America. Tony saying South America. The entire room said South America. Everybody got it right. The correct answer was South America. Chenard founded Patagonia in 1973. The company is named after a mountainous region of Argentina and Chile that's covered in vast forests and glaciers. For more on the history of Chenard and Patagonia, listen to episode 188 of the Meat Eater podcast where Steven Giannis interview the brand's founder. Question five. The topic is fishing. Merriam-Webster defines this as, quote, a current of water running contrary to the main current. Again, a confident room. Here's the question. The topic is fishing. Merriam-Webster defines this as a current of water running contrary to the main current. Seth hasn't picked up his board yet. The rest of the room is ready to show their answers, though. Cal, you got this one? I, I know what that, it makes sense You haven't to picked me. up in a dictionary in a little while, so you can't, no, you don't know for I have, certain. Yeah, I have no okay. idea, but being a, being a river feller. Mm-hmm. I know what I'd call it. River fool. <laughs> That's right. Is everybody ready? Corey? Yeah. Tony? I guess. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Corey saying confluence. Tony saying, what's that say, Tony? Back channel. Back channel. Chester saying Eddie. Seth saying channel. <laughs> Cal saying Eddie. Mark saying Eddie. Logan saying confluence. Ford saying Eddie. The correct answer is Eddie. The room did pretty well. Is it I E or I E? Why? Is it why? Okay. Huh, Eddies sorry. are often targeted by anglers because they provide concentrated areas where insects and bait fish get trapped. They usually form immediately downstream of an obstacle like a rock or stump. The word dates back to the 15th century and has synonyms like swirl, spin, pearl, and whirlpool. Phil, we are halfway through the game of trivia. Give us a scoreboard update. 
Uh, pretty low scoring game, guys. Mm-hmm, uh, mm-hmm. We've got Logan with a single point, and everybody else is tied up with two points. No oh, way. That's true. Oh. Still in oh, it. Oh, man. Wow. We could have cool. parody. We could have an eight-way tiebreaker. Time to focus here, <laughs> and that would be fun. A chance. <laughs> yeah, Cal's getting serious all of a sudden. He just changed his posture. Oh, I was just like, man, this. Yeah. Here we go. Here we question go. Question six. The topic is conservation. This next great question comes to us via Brandon Rosenboom. If you have a question you think is right for Meat Eater trivia, you can send it to trivia at themeateater.com. This invasive species, which is found in 17 states, is a South American mammal that was introduced here in 1899. Again, the topic is conservation. This invasive species, which is found in 17 states, is a South American mammal that was introduced here in 1899. Cal, do you have this one right? I think so. Okay. The room looks pretty split on their confidence. How about you, Ford? You got this one? Feeling good. Feeling good. Are you? Actually, I mean, oh, I, you know, I take it back. Okay. We'll see. 17 states is a lot of states. 17 mm-hmm. of them. That's the part that throws me, actually. Yeah. If now, it was like three, I'd be super confident. Yeah. Logan told me that he listens to every episode of Meat Eater Trivia. Thank you, Logan. How does it feel to be in the room uh, versus having it on your radio? Terrible. Is there a lot of pressure? Oh, yeah, this is okay. bad. And, and everyone else is tied for first. <laughs> <laughs> it's not too late. A lot, of, a lot of game left. Here's the question again. This invasive species, which is found in 17 states, is a South American mammal that was introduced here in 1899. The date gives me pause, too. I think... I, I mean, I'm assuming... This extra information is meant to help you, not confuse you. We'll see how the room does. Is everybody ready? You can add you idiots in there. Come on. Lowest scoring game ever. We'll see. I got faith. Okay, we ready? I got faith. Is everybody ready? Logan, still writing. Marcus, still writing. Cal's getting impatient, and you are both in reaching distance of him. I mean, let's efficiently be wrong here. Come on, come yeah, on. You know, yeah. there's, a, there's a saying in golf: uh, if you're going to pay, if you're going to play bad, you can't play slow. Oh, there you that go. That should like apply that. to trivia as well. That means I'm a very fast golfer. No, ha. man, I, I feel like an idiot. <laughs> we all do, buddy. Join the club, Chester. <laughs> Is everybody ready? Uh, I hate anything. this answer. Just write down anything, Chester. Uh, uh, He's panicked. This is not right. That's okay. not right. <laughs> no, that's no. not right. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Corey saying Nutria. Tony saying Nutria. Chester without an answer. I would have wrote that, but I saw <laughs> Seth's board. <laughs> that's oh, gonna, it sounds that's like Seth's honest. fault. I did. Self-regulation. Seth yeah. and Cal saying Nutria. Mark saying Burrow. <laughs> Logan saying Barbary Sheep. Ford saying Nutria. The correct answer... Is Nutria, the room, did pretty well. So which states? The nation's highest population of Nutria live along the Gulf Coast, but they're also found up and down the East and West Coast. They're blamed for a significant impacts and loss of wetlands in the Mississippi Delta and Chesapeake Bay. Nutria are also hard on agriculture by destroying dikes and levees that are used for irrigation. For if you look at the distribution map, it's basically anything that touches the ocean. Um, it seems like they have Nutria. Well, here's what gave me pause. Mm-hmm. In theory, in my home state of Maryland, we've eliminated Nutrial. Yeah, All they, of them. That was a major announcement. Bold, I would say. If, well, you ever, if you've ever, ever been to the marshes of Maryland, and you <laughs> feel like you can confidently look at that and be mm-hmm. like, you know what's not here. Oh, uh, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, my, it's crazy. So my first job was working at Blackwater National Wildlife Refuge, which is sort of the core of the Chesapeake marshlands complex. And I remember walking by the APHIS guys every day who were in theory going to trap all the nutria mm-hmm. and thinking like... Did you ever see one? Nutria? Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Okay. Back then. But the concept of ridding Maryland's marshes of every swamp rat seemed rather ludicrous at yeah. that point. But damn if they didn't do it, apparently. You Quite. should check out uh, the Cal in the Field episode down mm. in Louisiana. Uh, we uh, bust a nutria and, and eat it and talk about the fact that um, 
because they erode swamp grasses. Mm-hmm. They're chewing on the on the bases of the swamp grass. Uh, an acre of tidal grass holds uh, over a million gallons of water. So it's a big uh, big way to protect your coastal marshes or coastal uh, coastlines from erosion. Is what I'm trying to say. Question seven. The topic is fishing. The Outdoor Channel helped launch this catch and release fishing league in 2011. Again, the topic is fishing. This is question seven. The Outdoor Channel helped launch this catch and release fishing league in 2011. Seth, do you have this one right? I think so. Okay. Is a league like a tournament? Not giving any hints. I'll tell you the question again. The Outdoor Channel helped launch this catch and release fishing league in 2011. It's all the information you will need. Tony, do you have this one right? You were quick to answer. I'm not sure. I have no confidence in any of my answers for this, but maybe I have it right. Do you normally have some confidence, though? When I'm not playing meat eater trivia, uh-huh. like just generally in life, no, no, no. <laughs> sometimes the other the other shows you've been on, or do you feel confident then? Not really. Okay, I panic and I'm worried because I'm not a very good closer, and so I'm, <laughs> I feel that crushing uh-huh. weight coming in, and all I keep thinking is I just got to beat Mark. Mm, that's that's good. Yeah, he did set the stage for that mm-hmm. pressure. I'm very excited to get a scoreboard update in a few questions from now because I think it's going to be tight. Oh, I'm going to change my answer real quick. Here's the question again. The Outdoor Channel helped launch this catch and release fishing league in 2011. Is everybody ready? Yes. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Corey without an answer. Tony saying Major League Fishing. Chester saying Major League Fishing. Seth saying Major League Fishing. Cal saying catfish noodlers. <laughs> Mark saying major league bass fishing. Logan saying MLF. Forward saying major league fishing. The correct answer is major league fishing. Mark, we're not going to give it to you. That's too many words. Logan, we will give it to you for the MLF, though. <laughs> Do you, even, do you, even though it is bass, you, fishing? bass fishing, do you disagree? <laughs> sorry, Mark. That's not the name of the league. Yep. I'm sorry, Mark. Oh, oh, now not, you're you're not gonna have the exciting multi-person tie. You never know. I mean, you just yeah. Spence. That Major answer was just as good fishing as fishing was created by the Professional Bass Tour Anglers Association and Outdoor Channel. It differed from other fishing competitions by placing a referee on each boat to weigh every fish and guarantee a quick catch and release. The refs then used iPads to update the leaderboard, which allowed anglers to track the real-time standings. Seth, do you like watching Major League Fishing? How does that rate compared to the other fishing competitions um, on I'm, TV? I'm more of an elite series guy, mm-hmm. personally, but I do, yeah, I do keep track. I think the, I could be wrong, but I think First Light sponsors the MLF guy. Really? Andy Morgan. We do indeed. Yes. Andy Morgan. Yeah. It's got to be kind of exciting for you guys because that, that iPad means one more screen on the boat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know the, the screens help you learn things about fish, Cal. That was mean, Cal. <laughs> Question eight. The topic I, is cooking. What do you got, Chester? If it's hooked up to internet, you could, I could then Google like how to catch a bass uh-huh. while I'm out there. <laughs> Use chat GPT there. Yeah. <laughs> Question eight, we will get a scoreboard update from Phil the Engineer after this. The topic is cooking. This restaurant chain came under fire in 2021 after DNA samples revealed that their tuna contained traces of chicken, pork, and beef. Tony was writing an answer when I was only about a quarter of the way through it. You know this one? I feel confident with this one. Okay, here's the question again. This restaurant chain came under fire in 2021 after DNA samples revealed that their tuna contained traces of chicken, pork, and beef. Our coworkers roasted beef are continuing to eat at this place. After okay. That's a hint for some folks. Ford, are you going to get this one right? You didn't need the hint? I've got nothing, but I'm going to think about the hint. Okay. Yeah. The Logan, that's your competition roasted. there. Well, Cal, that happens often in our office, so it doesn't really narrow it down. Corey, do you have an answer yet? I do not. Okay. I wonder if it's a fast food restaurant. I feel like you would have put that in there, though. Here's, here's the question again. This restaurant chain came under Could fire in food. 2021 <laughs> after DNA samples revealed that their tuna contained traces of chicken, pork, and beef. 
chicken of the sea? I'm gonna need you to come up with an answer. <laughs> uh, you can't trust anything out of Corey right now with those shades. A lot of disinformation, misinformation. Ford, how you feeling yep. about your answer now? Pretty terrible. Did did Logan help you at all? Mm, not really. Okay. Is everybody ready? Corey? You bet. Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Corey saying Subway. Tony saying Subway. Chester saying Arby's. Seth saying Subway. Cal saying Subway. Marcus saying <laughs> P.F. Chang's. <laughs> Logan saying Subway. And Ford saying Red Lobster. The correct answer is Subway. You know the people at Subway were like, thank God. We have a tuna scandal and not the other scandal that we were associated with. <laughs> like, oh, that, yeah. Thanks for we are tuna again. super suspect, yeah. everybody. Yeah. Now that you we're say the that, weird Cal. Guys. We're the weird, weird tuna guys. Maybe that story was planted, come to think of it. I mean, mm -hmm. anything. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 My God. Nilama Amin sued Subway after a marine biologist analyzed 19 samples of tuna from 19 different restaurants and found, quote, no detectable tuna DNA sequences whatsoever. They did, however, find other types of fish as well as chicken, pork, and beef. Amin filed a motion to dismiss the lawsuit in May of this year, saying she needed to pause the legal action because of morning sickness from her pregnancy. I don't want to defend Subway here, but mm -hmm. doesn't cooking fish do something to its DNA makeup? I, I do not probably know. Not it probably not turn it into chicken and pork. pork. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, Logan, yeah. when when uh, when you gave the hint to Ford, Ford, you said Red Lobster. Do, do, is it common for First Light folks to eat Red Lobster and then get made fun of? <laughs> Absolutely not. Okay. <laughs> no, I, yeah. And actually, it should have been a hint because there are very few chains in the Wood River mm. Valley. Subway is one of them. Used Bill, to, used to be. Is Bill, we have two questions oh. left. Where does the leaderboard stand? The only player who is no longer in the running is Mark Kenyon. Oh, what? two points. Oh. Yeah, this has been an all-time worst for me. <laughs> oh, no, oh, wow. feeling bad. Chester, Logan have three points. Ford and Cal and Corey have four, and uh, Tony and Seth are tied Ooh. up with five points. So we still got a race. Question eight, excuse me, question nine. The topic is biology. This is our listener question of the week, which was won by Ken Denham for sending this great question. Ken is going to get a book signed by Steve. The Platte River Valley, which is located in this state, is where migratory sandhill cranes gain 20% of their body weight each spring. Again, the topic is biology. Here's the question. The Platte River Valley, which is located in this state, is where migratory sandhill cranes gain 20% of their body weight each spring. A confident Logan. Logan, do you have this one right? I do from actually previous podcasts. I think it was discussed. Oh, giving hints again, Logan. Giving hints out. I watched a uh, little Happy Gilmore the other day. That Just was a little that was bit. A, that was a good, good point in time for Subway. You know, <laughs> may have been where they peaked. <laughs> yeah, I think it's uh, I think it's famously a terrible movie glitch that they had. Not a glitch, uh, but an inconsistency. We're happy when he's golfing. He has a, a flannel on, and underneath it you can see he has a Subway shirt on. And then other scenes, it's just a plain white tee. Uh, so pay attention to that next time. Subway messed up there. Yeah, yeah. I knew there was something wrong about that movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, all the rest of it, uh -huh. I totally believed. Here's the question again. The Platte River Valley, which is located in this state, is where migratory sandhill cranes gain 20% of their body weight each spring. Corey, are you ready? Uh, I got a map going here. Okay. Trying to figure out where the Tony valley is might be. Tony's laughing at whatever is on your whiteboard the right United now. States. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm going to need you to come up with an answer. I think we're only waiting <laughs> on you. Oh, really? <laughs> How we doing, Corey? Let's go. You have an answer? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have Corey saying Kansas, Tony saying Nebraska, Chester saying Colorado, Seth saying Nebraska, Cal saying Colorado, Mark saying Nebraska, Logan saying Nebraska, and Ford saying Nebraska. They got it. The correct answer is Nebraska. Yep. 
the Nebraska's Platte, is Platte, in Platte River though. Valley is the mm. most important spot is the most important stop for Sandhill cranes during their migration north. They start showing up in February and leave in April, putting on one pound of fat in that time. The half a million Sandhill cranes that stop in Nebraska each spring are there to eat corn, earthworms, snails, and insects. Phil, we have one question left. Who is winning? We've got Ford Van Fossen with five points and tied up still. Six points apiece, Tony and Seth. And they're the only three left in the game? Only three left in the game. Okay, I'm, I'm, Can we tell the listeners that the Platte is also in Colorado? It is also in Colorado, okay. but it's not the important <laughs> stop for the Sandhill Cranes like the portion in Nebraska. Yeah, I just would have worded the question a little different, but we well, you know. <laughs> Question 10. These the, states have this river. The topic is One of them hunting. Puts a lot of fat on cranes. That's um, how I would have said it. Name um, that state. <laughs> You're lucky for you, Cal. We have Yanni has volunteered to host an episode of Trivia. He's Ooh. writing his own questions. Wow. He's going to do the script. And then I'm going to have to play. And I'm not looking forward to that. I'm in a good position over here. I never have to prove my knowledge. You think it's going to be like a vengeance episode? Is that how know. he's saying it? Oh. I don't know. Nah, we'll you'll see. be fine. We'll see. Question 10. The topic is hunting. Alaska's official dog breed, which closely resembles the husky, has a rich history of hunting bears and seals. Again, the topic is hunting. This is the final question of the game. Alaska's official dog breed, which closely resembles the husky, has a rich history of hunting bears and seals. We have three players left. We have... Tony and is it Seth? Tony and Seth are tied, and Ford is right behind them. Quick answers from the room. Cal, are you confident that you have this one right? Yeah. Is everybody ready? Go ahead and reveal your answers. We have oh. Corey saying Malamute, Tony saying Malamute, Chester saying Malamute, Seth saying oh. Chow, Cal saying Malamute, Mark I saying no Malamute, Logan saying Malamut. Ford <laughs> saying Malamut. The correct answer is Malamute making Tony Peterson our winner Woo! for the first time ever. Well done, Damn Tony. It. Can I, can I say something What do you got? What do you got? Uh, suck it, Mark. <laughs> now, we, going back to the original premise of this whole conversation, though, wow. the reason why Tony won this one and then I did not is mm -hmm. because he kept me up till 1 a.m. talking about That's conspiracy right. theories. I think hey, it was. Who, who kept himself up last night? Fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> the Alaskan Malamute became the official dog breed of Alaska in 2010 when a group of school kids championed the effort for a class project. Malamutes have long played a utilitarian role on the last frontier as working, hunting, and family dogs. They have a history of pulling sleds, hunting seals, and protecting camps. Tony, you win with, what was it, seven correct answers? Well done. What happens next is you get to choose where the $500 donation from Meat Eater goes. You've never been in this position before. What's it going to be? You know, a lot of people probably expect me to pick a deer organization, mm -hmm. but I am going to go with Pheasants Forever because I am a rooster junkie. Okay. Good on you, Tony. You have some big pheasant hunts coming up this year. Yeah. This is <laughs> Every not... time I'm not in a tree stand. Uh -huh. Yeah. I'll if be... you uh, tune into this show... Pheasant Fact Friday on the uh, Pheasants Forever Instagram page is wonderful mm -hmm. knowledge. That's really cool, yeah. A lot well, of good uh, habitat work there. Tony, you will always have this on Mark now. Um, we'll update the stats again if Mark needs them. To, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it's going to look even worse. After this showing, yeah, we should definitely help. update those stats and then mm -hmm. announce them often. Yep. This was, it, a, this was a rough game yeah. across. And Tony, Tony yeah. may just retire now. He never has to uh, show up again to win or prove anything. It's done. Yeah. Well Enjoy. done, Tony. Well played. Well played. Thanks, Good job, buddy. Tony. Join us next time for more Meat Eater Trivia, the only game show where conservation always wins. Mm -hmm.